In the last few videos, I've demonstrated how to uh, center drill. I've demonstrated how to face. Um, I stuck one in on parting, which is a little out of order. That's a little more advanced than I've been doing on these these recent videos. But uh, nonetheless, I, I did one on parting. Um, today, I'm going to talk about the machining operation that the lathe was designed for, and that's turning. Um, while a milling machine is designed to produce flat surfaces and linear surfaces like slots or steps, uh, things like that, a lathe is designed to make round work. It's designed to make uh, circular features. And uh, obviously that's what it does best, so that's the next thing on their list, is uh, to turn a round cylindrical surface. Um, we have here, this, this is a piece of stock I've been using all my, on all my videos. It's a piece of inch and a quarter mild steel stock. I think uh, for today's demonstration we'll turn this down to inch and an eighth. We'll take an eighth inch off the diameter just to show you how it's done. So you'll, you'll notice this, uh, the outside of this stock is rough. This is, it's a milled surface. It's just the way it came from the, from the mill that made, made the bar stock. It's not a very accurate surface. What we need to do is we need to machine that surface down to an inch and an eighth diameter. And how are we going to go about doing that? Well, first thing we've got to do is we've got to select a tool. Uh, here's a tool I ground, just like the ones I ground on my uh, video on grinding turning tools. This is a right hand turning tool. Um, if you go and watch that video, it'll, it'll show you how to do it. And In fact, there's even a reference page on my website that gives all, all the angles for the various uh, materials. So grind yourself up a right hand turning tool and mount it in the tool holder. Uh, this one's designed to work perpendicular to the work. It's not necessary to make it perpendicular, but uh, that's what we're going to use it for today. If you wanted to uh, uh, turn up to a shoulder or something like that, you might swing it around so so the uh, cutting edge is a little bit less than perpendicular, so you can machine up to a, make a square shoulder with it. Or you could use a different tool without the, the side cutting edge angle like this one has. Alright, next thing we need to do is we need to set the tool bit on the center line of the work. Right now it's a little bit high. You can't see it from this camera angle, so let me switch camera angles and show you how that's done. Alright, this is a little better view. Um, turning tools, in fact most tools on the lathe are, are set to the exact center of the part. Now, if, you know, if, they're, if they're above the center when you start using them they're gonna they're gonna rub on this front surface and give you a poor finish if they're below center you know if you're working out here on a diameter they're gonna tend to want they're gonna want to pull the tool into the work it's not a good thing either so for the most part all tools let's just make a general statement here and say all tools need to be set on center on the center of the work vertically just this one has a little nib on it from the parting procedure we did on the last video so I can use that to line up the, the tool vertically just like this. Um, okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a trial cut on the diameter and we're going to set the dials on the, on the cross slide. So let's, let's switch camera views again and do that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little, just take a trial cut on this rough surface here. I know I have an eighth inch to machine off, so that's quite a bit of material, so I don't have to worry about going undersize. So let's turn the lathe on and just go ahead and take trial cut. Uh, this is an inch, a little over an inch in diameter and it's steel so we're going to want to cut about, uh, about, let's see, about 400 RPM thereabouts. Uh, if you, there's also a video on that and a uh, reference sheet on my website that shows, shows how to, oh no there's no reference sheet, but there is a video that tells you how to uh, set the RPM. So let's go ahead and set it up to 400 RPM. figure out how to turn it on here. There we go, that's a lot more than 400 RPM. Let's slow her down. Okay, about there. So now we're going to want to just go in and just break through the uh, surface of this scale on here. Um, that's a good point. If you're, if you're machining scale, don't come in from the outside and try and cut through the scale like that because you, all you'll do is dull the end of your tool bit. Come out here on the outside and feed it in beyond the, the scale. It'll be a lot easier on the, the tip of your tool. All right, let's go ahead and take a, a cut on that. Clean it up a little bit, just enough that we can uh, 
measure with a micrometer. See, that ought to do it. Whoops. All right, when you're done, don't move the tool bit like I just did. Let's do it again. Okay, when you get enough machine that you can measure, just stop the feed, shut the spindle off, and then we'll grab a micrometer and see where we're at. Got to have a starting, got to have a reference point. If we're going to turn to a specific diameter, we have to know where, where the tool is right, relative to the work. And that's what we're doing now. So let's get on it with the micrometer. Measure it. There's also a video on reading the micrometer if you're unfamiliar with that. Uh, what we have now is uh, 1.229. Um, okay. So 1.229 minus 1.125. We, got, we have a hundred and four thousandths to take off yet. Alright, so now we have to, uh, next thing we need to do is we have to zero the dial on the cross slide. Okay, right now the dial is not set to anything specific, so we have to zero it out so we know where we are and so we know how far in to go to move our tool bit to take the next pass. So let's uh, switch angles again here so you can see the uh, dial on the cross slide and I'll show you how to do that. So this is the cross slide dial. We need to, uh, there's, there's two ways you can do this now. We know we have, we have 104 thousandths to take off. So either you can set your cross slide dial to zero and then turn it in 104 thousandths to uh, finish your diameter or you can offset the cross slide dial 104 thousandths. So when you're two sides, the dial reads zero. That's the way I like to do it because I'm, I'm old and my memory gets kind of short and if I get uh, distracted a little bit I, I kind of I tend to forget the number so this way if, if I set it if I offset it 104 thousandths I know when the dial reads zero my parts to, to size so let's do that um, this dial is one turn and this dial is 200 thousandths on the diameter so let's there's zero right there let's Back it off 104 thousandths right there. Lock it down. Be careful you don't move the move the crank. We don't want to move the tool bit. That would lose our reference point. Lock your dial down. So now I move the tool off the work. Now if I move my dial in to zero, that's going to move the tool bit in 104 thousandths and to the right to the right finish diameter. So let's go ahead and uh, turn this part to the to the right diameter. Okay, so now we have our cross slide dial zeroed out. We know we have 104 thousandths to take off. I, I, now is when you have to kind of know your machine. Okay, I know this lathe can easily easily take 104 thousandths off in one pass. But I don't want to do that. I want to take a roughing and a finishing cut. So I'm going to want I'm going to want to take like maybe rough rough a cut off at maybe 80 thousandths, and then uh, move it in another 10 take a, a cleanup cut on it and check it just to make sure that my dial's set right and then I'll take take the rest off. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to move in about 30 thousandths before, before zero here. Okay, just to, as a roughing cut. Let's go ahead and take that off. I'm sure you guys all have safety glasses on. I know you'll hear a lot, a lot of that from me. Some people brush it off and they go, oh, I'm tired of hearing that all the time. Well, you know, it's real important. You don't want to lose an eye, especially lose an eye doing a hobby where you're supposed to enjoy yourself, you know, and relax a little bit. It can easily happen, so make sure you take proper safety precautions. Okay, so that was my roughing cut. Now let's take another 10 off. Here, let's, let's take another 20 off. That'll, that'll leave 10 thousandths left for a finish cut. So by my dial, 
we should be ten thousandths oversized right now, which should, should it should make a hundred or one inch one thirty five, a ten thousandths over inch and an eighth. So let's check that. Okay, it's uh, I must have bumped something because it's one inch one thirty seven. It means I have twelve thousandths to go, but that's okay as long as I know that now. It's better now than after you take a cut and find out you went uh, a couple thousandths too far. All right, so now I'll take that last ten thousandths off. That's down to the zero plus another two. That should take us right to inch and an eighth. Okay, I'm also gonna put a little uh, cutting fluid on this, and I'm gonna speed up the RPM just a little bit so I can get a little better finish. And this should do it. This is just ordinary cutting oil. Make a nice finish on our part. Not sure what kind of steel this is. It's not too bad. It's even a pretty good finish. Alright, so let's check it. Final diameter. Hopefully it'll be 1.125. Okay, I don't know if you can see it. It's pretty darn close. 1.1245, 1 half thousandth off. So that's about it. That's how you turn a, a diameter to size on the lathe. Um, I don't know what we'll do next, but I'm sure I'll come up with something. See you then.